please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation. Dear students, myself Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Today we are going to see a very different topic, Pharmacovigilance. Dear students, pharmacovigilance is a comparatively a new topic in India. It is related to the drug safety, drug alerts, signals and ADRs and so many things related with the safety of the drugs. Dear students, today we will take an introduction to this pharmacovigilance and we will see the history of pharmacovigilance, why this pharmacovigilance evolved, why there was a need for introduction of this pharmacovigilance. Dear student, I would like to tell you one very important thing about this drug, Claude Bernard. Claude Bernard was a great pharmacologist. He once said that everything is poisonous, huh? nothing is poisonous. Everything is poisonous? Nothing is poisonous. What does it mean? He means that all it depends upon the dose you use. In simple language, a poison can be used as a medicine when used with the proper dose. And if you use the medicine with the higher dose, you will get the poisonous effect. And that's why no drug is poisonous or no drug is safe. The safety and efficacy of the drug depend upon the dose which you use. Now, what is this pharmacovigilance? All of you know pharmacovigilance is a science related with observing of the drug effects. Dear students, the word pharmacon, the word pharmacon means a drug and vigilar is an observer. Ultimately, the literal meaning of pharmacovigilance is a observation of a drug, means ultimately observation of drug effects. Dear students, there are always some important events behind developing of a system. This pharmacovigilance is well developed in the western countries, especially in UK and in USA. And there are certain major events which took place behind development of this pharmacovigilance. There are many historical events which give rise to this pharmacovigilance and today we are going to see two important events of them. And the first event which introduced the basic law in USA is known as sulfonilamide disaster. I'd like to tell you about this sulfonilamide disaster. Dear students, in USA, Messengil and company was selling sulfonilamide for the cure of streptococcal infections. Streptococcal infection, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, LRTI, URTI. Those were due to streptococcal infection and those streptococcal infections were well responding to this sulfonilamide. And company was selling it, the business was going properly. But as the drug is being sold in the market, there was the increasing demand from the market because at the time it was sold in the form of tablets and the children cannot take the tablets and that's why there was demand to have a liquid of this sulfonilamide in the market. The chemists were trying of their best, but the solubility of this sulfonilamide was the issue. Finally, the chemist found that sulfonilamide is soluble in diethylene glycol, popularly known as DEG. As the chemist found that the drug is soluble in diethylene glycol, they produce a liquid from it and the company marketed it with the name of elixir. Soon it was available in the market, the people consumed it and suddenly the poisonous effect of diethylene glycol were seen and about 107 deaths were reported by the consumption of diethylene glycol because diethylene glycol is a poisonous product. Then the pharmacist who developed the formula committed suicide and the company Messengil was fine at the highest possible amount of that time. 
Now, the basic question was why this disaster took place? The student, this disaster took place because there was no law governing the safety of the medicines in U.S. at the time. And because of this sulfonylamide disaster, very first time the need emerged for the safety of medicines and government of U.S.A. at that time introduced the law. The law was known as Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act popularly known as FDC Act 1938. It was passed at the time. The funny thing about this law is that after that law it becomes necessary to prove the safety of the medicine. But dear students, it is funny to note that still though the law for the food and drug FDC was passed, still there was no need to prove efficacy of the drug. The whole control was on safety of that, not efficacy of that. Efficacy need not to be proved, only safety has to be proved at that time. Thereafter, this first disaster that is sulfonylamide gives us the act, FDC Act 1938. In 1950, in Germany, West German pharmaceutical company was very famous company and those introduced sedative drug, thalidomide. Thalidomide which is used to induce the natural sleep without hangover on the next day. Naturally, the drug become very popular. At the time, the animal studies with the thalidomide proved that no highest dose of thalidomide can kill the animal. And the company sold the drug using this experimental data saying that suicide is not possible with thalidomide. It ultimately means that thalidomide was a very safe drug and naturally as it is being a very safe drug, a sedative drug, it was very useful in controlling the vomiting of pregnancy. That is what we call morning sickness. Dear student, soon that West German pharmaceutical company had promoted the drug in the pregnant ladies to control the nausea and vomiting that is morning sickness of the ladies. So throughout Europe, about 46 countries were having this drug readily available in their markets. The ladies who were pregnant were consuming this drug. And very soon, in November 1961, suddenly there was increase in the cases of phacomalia. Phacomalia is a disease where there are short limbs. The upper limbs and the lower limbs become very short. That is known as phacomalia. Suddenly, the number of cases of a newborn phacomelia increased and this was the serious issue to be addressed at the time. Meanwhile, one Australian obstetrician, Dr. William McBride and a German pediatrician, Dr. Widukin Lenz, these were the first two doctors who came up with some minor data saying that Thalidomide is causing this phacomalia in pregnancy. Naturally, dear students, after that event, subsequently the animal trials were being conducted and it was proven that yes, if it is being administered in the pregnant rats, pregnant animals, they are going to produce phacomalia in those animals. And this is how my dear student which drug, the drug which was said to be very safe, cannot be used for the suicide, cannot kill the animals at any dose, was found to be a drug of serious congenital anomalies. One thing I must tell you about the same drug. This drug cannot enter the US market and the story is really interesting why it doesn't enter the US market. My dear student, in software, try to understand, the Focomalia event was recognized in November 1961. I am telling you that in September 1960, US FDA 
received the application for the approval of this thalidomide in US market. At that time in September 1960, there was no issue of safety because it was proved that the drug was good, it do not have the hangover, it's a very good drug inducing the natural sleep, no animal can be killed with the highest dose of thalidomide, everything was on the safer, safer and safer side. And that's why it was said that to take the license for marketing approval of this thalidomide was an easy task. And that's why because of this easiness, the file was given to a very newly appointed drug reviewer, Dr. Francis Kelsey. Dr. Francis Kelsey was a lady, just she joined USFDA one month before and she received the file. As I already told that the company was claiming that it's a safe, safe and a safe drug. Still, Francis Kesley was not convinced with the existing data for two important purposes. At the time, the company was trying to sell the product for pregnant ladies. Francis Kelsey was saying that the data is not generated either in the pregnant ladies or in the pregnant animals. The data is of normal animals and normal human beings and that's why this was the first concern of Kelsey that the data is not generated in the pregnant animals. And the second thing what she was telling at the time drug drug interactions of thalidomide are not available. These are the two important points she wrote and she practically denied the approval of thalidomide in USA and that's why dear student US ladies who were pregnant at the time saved from a very dangerous form of phacomolia. You will be surprised to know the estimated patients of phacomolia in European countries and the figure is 10,000 newborn babies had phacomolia which was detected in 1961. US was saved because of Dr. Francis Kelsey. Because of this, Dr. Francis Kelsey was awarded the highest civilian award known as President's Medal in USA. My dear students, the second and a very important event that is thalidomide disaster end up in a new law known as Kefir Harris Amendment. This Kefir Harris Amendment is the most important milestone in the stages of history of drug approval or the stages of drug development. My dear students, now you got that thalidomide is a villain. Got it? Yes, but not dear students. Still, Thalidomide is a drug to be used in multiple myeloma and thalidomide can be used in the complications of leprosy. The drug which is very dangerous in the pregnancy can be used for some other purposes and this is known as repurposing of the drug. A drug used for some other purpose is not useful or is useful but with the serious side effects. The same drug can be used for some other purpose. This is known as repurposing of the drug. Dear students, this is the first part related with pharmacovigilance. We will see the second part that is what is the current practices of pharmacovigilance especially related to India. We will see in our next lecture. Dear students, to see the second part of this pharmacovigilance, please subscribe to our channel Acure Life Science Foundation. Thank you. Dear students, I know that you like my videos, then please share and subscribe. Thank you.